Um, now, where was I? So we have uh, culture can be applied in, in a, a international setting, and just some uh, and and, uh, and on a national scale, and just grab some uh, some snippets. I actually asked around the office uh, about you know what what characterises the the Kiwi culture. People talk about barbecues, beaches, uh, drinking, uh, the batch in the quarter acre section, uh, beach. Uh, in the Wellington Sevens. <laughs> Apparently now is a cultural activity. Um, I've been to ten. Um, but, uh, uh, unfortunately, I can't tell you who won the final in, in any of those years. Um, but 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 they're just examples, and they're not a comprehensive list of uh, of examples by by any means. But I guess just some of the uh, some of the the things that characterise the Kiwi culture, uh, according to my uh, my colleagues at work, um, and things that we can all relate to. So culture, uh, one one point I, I really wanted to make was that everyone has culture, even if you don't think you you have. Um, and it's probably because you've got a lot of culture that you don't think you have, because you're so immersed in it. So that's an important, uh, important point. Uh, and culture can exist on national, regional, organisational, group. And what people are most familiar with is this idea of ethnic culture, belonging to a particular ethnic group. Um, and culture, fundamentally, going back to that definition of uh, what culture is, and can uh, prescribe values, beliefs and behaviours which guide people's lives the expectations and aspirations. I was at a, uh, a presentation uh, that uh, Professor Mason Jury gave a few years ago, and he was talking about culture and health. I'm talking about traditional Māori culture. And he said, fundamentally, uh, culture in ancient times was a framework for health and well-being. That every cultural practice uh, actually could be linked back to health and providing a framework for living. There were a couple of questions I had, but uh, <coughs> around certain protocols of my tribe, but uh, he didn't have an answer for it. <laughs> but frameworks for uh, for living and uh, and which guide your your behaviours. Moving on to the, the question of culture and uh, mental health, I want to talk uh, just quickly about Maori culture and mental health and mental well-being. And then shortly after that, just pose some uh, some questions uh, for people to think about. In terms of providing a, a context, this is a quote that um, Mason Jury said in uh, in 1997. I think Matsuro, you were there, weren't you? It was a while ago. It was a long time ago. I was at this uh, it was a Māori Mental Health Summit here in Wellington. It was a long time ago. Matsuro will tell you, uh, it might have been a few people there, um, we, we, he released a plan called Puaho, a five-part plan for Māori mental health. It was that long ago, actually, that I was doing the OHPs. Yeah, you flip it, flip the acetate. A lot younger then. But people were surprised by this, uh, this comment here. And it just highlighted to the audience the, uh, the, uh, the problems that were attached to Māori mental health or Māori mental illness as it was. The problem uh, that we've subsequently found and as a result of a um, fairly major uh, psychiatric epidemiology study that was conducted, uh, actually was completed about four years ago, was that the, 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 the problems have probably gotten worse in the last uh, 10, 11 years. <coughs> and here's a um, in order to provide some sort of a context to the issue of Māori mental health or Māori mental ill health. Here's some of the rates there that were uh, generated from the, uh, the EPI study. Uh, the, the, the main ones there at the bottom, that more than 50% uh, of the Māori population over their lifetime, the lifetime prevalence rates are always higher. Uh, more than 50% of, of Māori could expect to have some uh, type of mental health uh, problem. 
a 12 month prevalence. Essentially, those that have had a, a problem in the uh, previous 12 months uh, from when the survey was taken, up to 30%, one in three. And the one month prevalence, which is um, essentially those that, that uh, had mental health concerns at the time of the survey, was about one in five. So the, the, the results were concerning, um, but also, I, I guess, highlighted the need to uh, uh, focus considerable effort, I guess, on strategies to improve uh, uh, Māori uh, mental health and wellbeing. And I'm sure people will agree that the, a number of strategies are required uh, from service development, um, improving access, and uh, workforce development. And I just want to talk about um, now, I guess, the role of culture in terms of promoting uh, Māori mental health and well-being. Actually, I think I've got a couple more slides in terms of the uh, problem. Many of the problems that they found from the, the EPI study were uh, moderate to severe. So typically they, they weren't uh, uh, small issues. Comorbidity is a significant issue. Uh, surprisingly, uh, despite the severity of, of illness, the access was poor. And uh, much of the burden uh, was felt by the poor, the young, and women in terms of the uh, rates of, uh, of mental health problems. Uh, what, what is surprising to, to a, a lot of people is that the rates increased dramatically, the admission rates for might increased dramatically from the, about the mid-1970s uh, till now. Uh, prior to that, Māori were, there was no uh, prevalence studies conducted, uh, but prior to that, Māori was scarcely visible within uh, uh, psychiatric facilities. But the rates boomed from about the mid-1970s onwards. We're not, in too sh uh, we're not too sure why, uh, but that's the, the, uh, the pitch picture that's been uh, presented. Any questions so far? What's your about or not? Kia ora tato. Um, is it true that um, a lot of our Māori mental health comes from alcohol, um, drugs, and all of those things, or is it uh, something that began long ago? Mm. Oh, he, 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 it used to be that the leading cause for first admissions for Māori males not so long ago was drug and alcohol induced psychosis. There is no evidence to suggest that Māori are biologically or physiologically predisposed to mental ill health. And in fact, um, I, I guess an, an example of that is the fact that the, the rates increased so dramatically from the 1970s. We, I, we, I'm glad Matsuri was nodding her head. Um, lifestyle factors are largely to blame. Um, it's not uh, the, the rates aren't so high because we're Maori. The rates are so high because we're exposed to environments uh, that aren't conducive to positive mental health. When, when you're poor, when you're unemployed, uh, when you've got no place to live. Um, all these factors combined create an environment that isn't good for, for uh, mental health and well-being. Unfortunately, our people are clustered in those areas. Uh, so in, answer, in response to your question, uh, yes, a lot of problems related to behavioural factors. Uh, probably al alcohol, one of the main. I think we tend to, with, with the sort of quartet around uh, pee and cannabis, we, we tend to forget that alcohol is probably the biggest drug <laughs> And tobacco, the country, they're trying to stamp that out. <laughs>